Hey guys, Prepper Madness, Pepper Madness back here. Uh, I was going to do uh, a five-part series on this hunting methods, but um, really, there's no, there's, there's no point in making a, m making like a three two-minute videos um, or whatever, because I know you all just love looking at my face and hearing my great voice. All right. <laughs> uh, after I after I cover the after I cover the last three uh, methods of hunting uh, in a post uh, SHTF environment, um, I'm going to I'm going to make one more video on this subject where I talk about the combinations of uh, of, all, of 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 these different methods, uh, different combinations of different methods, uh, meshing. And help you along the way. I'm also going to give you a, a few small tips, and um, then I'm going to discuss uh, something that was uh, one of the viewers gave me in a comment uh, about uh, about the pop uh, the hunting population, uh, the 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 big game uh, population getting depleted in the first month after an SHTF, and I'm I'm just going to give you my uh, my 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 personal opinion on that backed up by a few numbers and uh, and some numbers from speculations from other uh, people who everyone seems to respect in the uh, preparedness uh, community here on YouTube okay so moving on let's get to the point at hand all right so the next part I was going to talk about here is trapping. Okay, now trapping, like I wrote down right here, uh, requires a great deal of knowledge in many, many different areas, uh, such as uh, such as tracking, uh, reading, reading the the uh, the movement, uh, the movement of of, of uh, animals and animal types in certain areas. Uh, Knowing where to place your traps uh, for them to be effective, uh, as well as all your bushcraft, all your bushcraft uh, kind of knowledge in there too. All right. So, you, uh, now remember we're talking post SHTF here. Okay. So we're we're uh, we're we're going to be low on fuel, uh, things like that. So your trap, uh, you, you 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 may decide to run three or four trap lines closely uh, to where you're close to where you're at uh, within a short distance because you'll mo most likely be walking okay so you're gonna you're, you're, you're gonna have to be fairly physically fit okay and and a lot of guys talk about this and it is very important that uh, that, that you work on your physical fitness and uh, and toughness right now very important okay moving on Moving on, we now have uh, moving on to the types of traps. I'm going to cover some more, uh, mainly just the uh, uh, the ones that I've uh, uh, that I've got a little more experience in, um, and they're a little more commonly used too. So, snares. Snares are most effective for your small game, like your squirrels, rabbits, and rats. Don't forget post SHTF man okay however on occasion under the right circumstances with the with 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 with, uh, with the right amount of experience and knowledge okay notice I use those two words uh, uh, separately experience and knowledge are two different things okay uh, you can you can snare deer and other medium medium and even large uh and even larger game like 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 bear okay it can be done i have never seen it okay i have heard of it i've never seen it okay so moving down the list here to the leg leg holder or uh conibar traps i hope i'm saying that right um they can be used depending on the size of the trap from uh, from small a large game um, I'm sure a lot of you have been in uh, have been in uh, old old pioneer museums and stuff and seen those 
those grizzly bear traps that are like uh they're like three and a half four feet four feet uh wide when they're when they're all opened up with a huge jagged teeth and and massive chain for tying around for attaching to a tree uh, just a nasty looking piece of gear um all right and then we move to uh i believe these are called abatees uh or pitfalls they're they're also uh very good for medium to large game uh that's basically that's just a pit that's been dug and then lightly covered and camouflaged over top along a, along an active game trail okay um again i'm not talking about i'm not talking about how to build these things or condoning the use of them all right in in today's society okay so uh moving on down the line to fish traps and nets that's pretty self-explanatory uh okay so like i was saying before and i'm emphasizing this again is a higher knowledge and being in touch with your natural surroundings is a must okay for some people this comes easier than others okay but eventually uh eventually you'll be able to work yourself to a skill level usually usually you'll be able to work yourself to a skill level that's that's proficient enough to get by on okay because you have to in a post shtf environment okay so the pros to all these things of course is silence okay there's no discharging of loud firearms uh, there's not even the thunk of an arrow or or the snap of a bowstring for crying out loud. It's just it's just silence. Um, it's an effective harvest of game, okay, and it is effective. Once you've caught on to how to do it, it's very effective. Um, now the cons, okay. So along your trap line, you'll be leaving a trail straight to your traps, leaving it open to possible ambush, theft, or robbery. Okay, so so security of that is 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 very important. Okay, so again, there's going to be a lot of walking, a lot of walking involved. Okay. Now here's something I'm probably going to get in trouble for, or, or get some flack for for some, some viewers, but strangled or unbled meat that is left for more than a few hours can go bad quickly in warm weather. Now I have gotten sick from this. Okay went and set some snares in the morning came back in the late afternoon around four o'clock this was in august it was like 33 degrees celsius out uh, i had went and snared a rabbit grabbed it gutted it skinned it and threw it on the threw it pretty much pretty much just threw it in the frying pan uh i got sick i got real real sick um anyhow so I'm I'm a little yeah <laughs> okay I'm a little leery about that okay so also again I've I touched on this before uh, these your trap lines must be routinely checked which becomes pattern forming after a while no matter no matter to your best efforts okay even if even if you're switching the hours okay they're not going to the, the the hours of you checking them and resetting your traps are not going to vary by much not not by much at all because if you're setting them if you're setting them uh say originally you go out and you set them at say seven o'clock in the morning in the summertime you should be back out there again in just a couple hours to go to to at least observe you don't have to go right up to the trap you can at least observe okay from a small distance that's where your binos and stuff like that come in um but you're going to start forming a pattern and people maybe even within your own group okay are going to are going to see you coming in with uh with with a bag or or some rabbits strung over your shoulder and pretty soon they're going to start following you okay they're going to start following you whether they're just curious or whether they're going, hey, you know, like, I want some of that. Okay. They'll start following you. All right. So that one's covered. So let's move on up here to the next one, which is stampeding. Okay. Now, when I'm talking about stampeding, I'm talking about uh, 
how uh, Native Americans and uh, Native North Americans, call them Indians, whatever, uh, and and people from other cultures around the world, other natives from other cultures, uh, how 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 they used to uh, stampede huge herds into uh, into in, in, into natural funnels like uh, like down the band uh, down, like down the badlands and in, in coolies and stuff like that, or 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 along uh, or along high plateaued ridges. Uh, and then over a cliff <laughs> to be harvested down below. It's true they did do that. Uh, head smashed in buffalo jump is just uh, it, well not just south of me. It's uh, quite a ways south, and I believe there's one in Saskatchewan too. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but uh, you can uh, you can also corral them into uh, into coolies, uh, into these coolies, these small canyons and 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 deep cut out. Uh, Old old creek beds and river beds. Uh, you, you can corral them into the, in, into these spots and then and then uh, and then harvest, right? So it's a uh, you know it's a it can be a touchy subject for some pe people, but hey, if you're in a, if you're in a group and you gotta and you gotta feed people, hey, it's a really good way to do it. Okay, so the pros, in in my opinion. Uh, or that vast amount of beets can be harvested in a short period of time. Very much true. And also other things too, the hides and all that, it, it can be harvested very quickly. The cons are the meat, is that the meat must be processed quickly. When I'm talking about the processing of it, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the slaughter. And, and of course, then, this, then the gutting and skinning and getting the meat out of there and smoked and salted, canned, whatever you're going to do with it got to be done very very quickly okay so a large number of personnel is required to do to, to, to do these tasks the the guys that do all the herding uh, uh, the guys that do the that, that, that look after the slaughter uh, and and the, and the people looking after the uh, uh, the processing okay because because you're not just going to be able to go in there if you're doing this method you're not just going to be able to go in there and go okay bang shoot add deer or shoot an elk and walk in there and uh, and get it out. <laughs> you know, it's there, 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 there's there's uh, there's going to be a bit of a herd in there, and they're going to be a little they're going to be a little pissed, so and scared. So so you got to slaughter them all basically, and then maybe let a few away, maybe let a few get away, uh, so that all your all your uh, depending on the number of in the herd and how. Uh, how tightly corralled you have them, so so they don't trample each uh, so they don't trample each other and wreck everything. Okay. Also, the terrain is a large factor. Like I mentioned before, uh, for instance, up here at the at the edge of the northern boreal forest, uh, there's a lot of swamp and stuff like that. I suppose you could you could push an animal into the muskeg if you knew of a hole, but it, it'd be pretty tough. It'd be pretty tough to do that. Uh, uh, the terrain type up here just doesn't it's not easy to funnel animals okay so you're you know that'd be more badlands uh, badlands kind of scenario canyons stuff like that okay so yes I do believe it could be used effectively under certain circumstances a little a little hard to do it though a little hard a lot of personnel needed a lot of people Okay, that's more of a tribal thing than anything else. Okay, now, just moving the old iPad around a bit, because, there we go. I don't even know if anyone can read any of this. <laughs> uh, my pen started fading out. Anyhow, so moving on to hunting dogs. So, the hunting dogs, we have, you know, we have the hounds, right? Hunting hounds. So, amongst them, they fall into different categories. And, uh, I'm... I'm more concerned with three of them than, uh, or, or rather have had, had more experience with three, with, uh, three of these, uh, subcategories of hounds than the other ones. So anyhow, we have sight hounds, which are, which are dogs like whippets, greyhounds, and the Irish wolfhound. Uh, we have scent hounds, which are dogs like the coon hound, the bloodhound. Uh, lurchers are crosses between 
sight hounds and pastoral or or terrier terrier breeds that are bred to be more pastoral or working class um up here yes of course then we've got the gun hounds like the retrievers the setters the spaniels pointers terriers curs dachshunds uh in this class here, I have a little more experience with retrievers and uh, spaniels than I do with any other uh, than I do with any other dog. But amongst the sighthounds, uh, I have had uh, I've had two Irish Wolfhound crosses and one that was near purebred, and we just we just got a, uh, a an, an eight week an eight eight week old puppy Irish Wolfhound purebred puppy. Uh, a week ago so he's nine weeks now he's just massive um the thing i like about them is that they don't rend their kill okay and they don't fight like a dog all right so a, a lot of people are gonna say oh you can use you can use your uh german shepherd dog for it no because german shepherd dogs i've watched them when they fight with a coyote they fight like a dog okay yes they do damage very good okay oh an irish wolfhound does not fight like a dog. It just goes in there and kills it. Okay. And it is not scared of a damn thing in this world. It ain't scared of nothing. They're an awesome animal. A little pig headed. But they're awesome. For hunting. Okay. Of course your retrievers. They bring. They bring your game back to you. Uh, mainly mainly that's used for duck and goose hunting. Uh, your spaniels. They're used in your upland game. Where they'll point and flush. Uh you know, like your Springers, stuff like that. I had a Springer Spaniel as a dog growing up. Extremely smart. Very good dog. Um, and then, of course, you got your Pointers, Terriers, Curs, and Dachshunds. Uh, don't have to get into them too much. So, the effectiveness of using of, 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 of using hunting dogs uh, is, is, is very high as an aid to your, as an aid, as an aid to hunting. Or in the case of uh, greyhounds or a wolfhound, they are they are uh, very high in the harvest, also. Okay, and 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 with a wolfhound, <laughs> again, I, yes, I'm I'm more biased towards it. Um, the wolfhound, uh, they they don't make a lot of noise. There's no there's a, not a whole bunch of woof 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 or anything like that. They just go. At least the ones I've had, they just go. They'll give a little poof to let you know that they're gonna go and they're gone. Um, try holding on to one. <laughs> okay, the cons, the only cons uh, with, with, with the dogs is is being able to keep them fed and healthy. Okay, that's that's the deworming uh, and keeping them. Uh, it, believe it or not, grooming them is is important. Um, keeping them. Uh, uh, Keeping fleas off of them and stuff uh, can be a bit of a can turn into a little bit of a of a hassle in a post uh, shtf situation. Um, now training. So unless you're familiar and you've gone to and you've gone to dog training clinics uh, stuff like that, um, the reason why I the reason why I go for more purebred dogs. Uh, is because the instinct is genetic in them, okay? For 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 whichever type, retriever, or or the or or the sight hounds, scent hounds, it they have the instinct already, but you have to learn how to harness that instinct, and have them do the things you want, okay? So 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 like your scent hounds, they're mainly gonna tree an animal for you, okay? Or 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 surround it and trap it somewhere and just not let you know not let it go anywhere. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with sight hounds. I've seen them work, but that's about it. Uh, so, yes, in my opinion, they can be under the right circumstances and with proper, with proper uh, training and experience. They, they, are, they are, I think, one of the more effective methods of hunting in a post-SHTF environment. Okay, there we go. And yes, I made that beautiful uh, tomahawk out of a 
out of a piece of spring steel. <laughs> it's hard as rock <laughs> and sharp too. And that knife. But anyhow, anyhow, I would like to uh, I would like to restate. I don't. I can't remember if I did it at the beginning of this video or not. I don't think I did. I would like to restate, however, that I do not condone poaching, illegal illegal hunting or harvesting of wild animals or otherwise uh, in any way, shape, or form uh, in today's world. Okay, guys, uh, I'll be back with another video probably uh, probably tomorrow morning, most likely. Okay, take care out there. Uh, I hope. Uh, I hope uh, what I'm saying makes sense to you. Okay, bye.